Hello, world. Welcome back to the Waveform Podcast. We're your robots. I'm Marquez. What is happening? And I'm Andrew. <laughs> and in today's episode, we're talking, uh, well, we just got Samsung's Unpacked event this week. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk a lot about my real thoughts on the Z Fold 3 and the Z Flip 3. But we also have a couple other things that we're going to just dive into quickly beforehand before we get absolutely lost in the in the weeds of all those new folding flippy phones. Um, but first this morning, we had a little iPhone thing come up. Yeah, uh, I was like a little confused because you just, you like turned to me and went, huh, do, do you really think they're going to skip iPhone 13 because it's unlucky? And I was just like, that was way too nonchalant. You can't yeah. just say that to me. Who who wants to skip it? Who, where are these rumors come from? I've only ever heard the term iPhone 13. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess it could be 12S is the other option. Mm-hmm. And but the, that- the logic is that some other smartphone companies in the past have skipped certain numbers for various yeah. reasons. One plus and four. One plus and notably a bunch of Chinese companies avoid the number four because the translated number four is it like sounds like the word for death or something like that. And it's it's not just unlucky, but they just avoid that in like all press and naming of things mm-hmm. in, in those countries. So cool. Great. Uh, but also like people skip numbers all the time. Like Samsung went Galaxy S1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 20, 21. <laughs> so I mean, I, an iPhone, an Apple has skipped nine. They just went straight from exactly. They did eight and 10 X, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. My, my, I have a couple things you've mentioned before that iOS has a 13. So clearly Apple isn't right. that worried. Yeah. About 13, by the way, for those unfamiliar, is an unlucky number oh. in the U.S. Anyway, mm-hmm. it's like a, it's sort of a mild superstition type thing. Thirteen is unlucky. Oh, okay, yeah. whatever. But yeah, there are other Apple products with the number thirteen already in the name. I noted that none of them are hardware products. Yeah, we have iOS thirteen. Uh, I think Joanna Stern also pointed out on Twitter we have a thirteen-inch MacBook Pro. <laughs> uh, I would argue like, that one's not quite as, but nah, like, yeah. even still, even though it's not hardware, like software being named 13 if they were really that superstitious about it they would skip it yeah um 12s also doesn't solve the problem because there would still be a 13 when we saw the 6s we That's still a saw a 7 so it's point. still gonna get to 13 so it doesn't really matter and while i i didn't really hear this rumor at all um there was an gadget article that stated nobody's expecting it to be called the iphone 13 for obvious reasons i thought that maybe that was felt sarcasm really broad i I don't know. We need but, a sarcasm, fil- like a sarcasm uh, yeah, font need, or something. Exactly. Um, yeah. But like, I guess my argument would just be, if we want to go a little different route here, I think the new iPhone should be called the 12s. And you think that because of the logical reason, which is it is a small upgrade from the 12. It right? is a small upgrade with what we're assuming is all the same design language. So I, I know there was argument that the 11 should be called the 11s, but I do think there was enough of a design difference really? to where you held i mean okay. flat edges sure but i do think they looked pretty different like there are two that you can very easily and distinguishably tell the difference when you're holding them or see them in public at least without a case on very different whereas this if we're assuming it's going to keep the i mean if it looks like the models that we got mm-hmm. flat edges the cameras are ever so slightly different but other than that if the notch maybe the notch changes a little bit i think we're not introducing anything too new that we know of yet, 12S would make perfect sense. Yeah, I mean, at this point, the difference in designs versus iPhones is always pretty subtle. Yeah. And I've noticed Apple, I mean, everyone's noticed this, but Apple always has something on the outside of the phone to make it visibly identifiable yeah, as the new exactly. iPhone. Like when you saw the iPhone 10, obviously you had that new form factor and the notch, but then when you had the iPhone 11, well, 10S was the same body. Yeah. So there was no outside difference. Mm-hmm. When you got to 11, the camera bump became that thing. Yep, exactly. So everyone could see the camera bump. When you got to 12, the flat sides became that thing. It was a slightly new design. Yeah. So if we're expecting iPhone 12S or 13 or whatever the next one is to be the same design, then your logic makes sense. Mm-hmm. But I think they're just going to straight up stop doing that adjustment and they're just going to start doing number, number, number. iPhone 12, 13, 14, 15, and the S is done. They're going to do an SE probably still, but they're going to do a Pro and a Pro Max and all that stuff every year. I think that they should do that. I, because I, 12 S Pro Max is too weird. I, I mean, <laughs> that's yeah, the logic. Yeah, no, I don't 
can't argue with you there. I, I think it should be the best way because Apple we've always commended as being one of the like the best naming scheme because it's so simple. And yeah. adding S, especially when you also have S E, feels confusing to the average person. So you should just know the next number up is the newest one. Yeah, like that's all you need to know. S doesn't mean small. S doesn't mean like side grader or I don't know. It's just like the new one is the next number. That's yep. all it is. And I, I don't think they skip thirteen at all. I don't know yep. if that's a hot take, no, but yeah, I, I think really, I, I would bet money against that. Yeah, I think it's the thirteen. Uh, we had some people saying maybe it would be uh, just the new iPhone or what something if it's like that. X I I I, is that Roman numeral? Roman for thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That would be, and then it would be X I V for fourteen. But XIV, you know, the thing yeah. about like just calling it the new iPhone, if I could go back to that, it could it could work because in the iPad world, that's also what they do. It's the iPad Pro, and if you ever want to refer to it specifically, you can by year. The site, so like call generation it like generation the or? newest iPad Pro, okay. the 2021 iPad Pro versus the last gen. Maybe you refer to it by the chip. You have the M1 iPad Pro versus the A14 by I, iPad Pro. Nobody really says these things out loud, but usually it's just the newest iPad Pro. And iPhone could live in that world where it's just the newest iPhone, the 2021 iPhone, the 2022 iPhone. But the reason I don't think they do that is because the naming structure of the iPhone is a little bit too iconic to just drop that entirely. Yeah, I think you change phones a little more often than you do MacBooks, tablets, stuff like that. So like, especially in a resale market where phones are resold so easily, it yeah. just makes the resale market much easier to know what you're getting. Imagine like going on eBay and looking for the uh, the iPhone 10, except that it was just called like the iPhone 20 from the year yeah exactly yeah. like that just makes it so much harder um yeah. yeah that's probably about all there is to say about that it's iphone coming up in uh september if it's not delayed we're expecting to see that pretty soon and yeah. that being said i don't i think it should be called 12s i think it will be if i put money on it it would be 13 though. right um, right just from what i expect from apple i have a kind of new one that got released a new article a new mm-hmm. product that got released this morning or yeah, announced this you, morning i saw you like firing away at your keyboard over yeah, this yeah. and i have no idea what you're talking about but it has something to yeah. do with chrome os okay, so I'll, I'll, fill me in i'll go in here i this was something adam sent us this morning and at first i was like neat and then i read it and i was like i actually find this wildly interesting and like this i think is is really really cool and it's i kind of have a hot take on it which i think what makes it that okay. neat but i'll explain it a little bit more here um so hp is creating a chrome os desktop they're calling it the chrome aio desktop which means all in one um, oh God, that's I put a picture here. I'm going to try and explain it. Tell me if you think this sounds nice. Imagine a uh, the first Google Home as a cone, and then on top of that is almost like an iPad, so a screen. So we have th- essentially imagine uh, an all-in-one desktop where it is a, the base is like a fabric-covered cone speaker, mm-hmm. and then there is a large screen tablet-looking thing on top. Oh, it rotates. Um, it rotates, oh. portrait to landscape, huh. and it has a webcam, and it also has a wireless keyboard and mouse. So this is a Chrome OS-based desktop. It is, real quick, I'm going to go over specs, but I think I just have, like, I'm just really interested in this because I think Chrome <laughs> OS and Chromebooks in general are super interesting and, like, okay. kind of revolutionary in a weird way. Um, so it is 21.5-inch, 1080 uh, IPS touchscreen that rotate, rotates from landscape to portrait. We mentioned that. You can either get a dual core Pentium Gold or a Core i3, 16 gigs of user expandable RAM, and an SSD up to 256. Now, let's just remember specs on Chrome OS and like Chromebooks in general are pretty low because they don't take a lot of computing power. If you're using them, it's generally all web based stuff. Yes. Um, and like apps because it uses the Play Store. So, but okay. So mm-hmm. I, I just want to look at the price real quick. Yeah. $600. Mm-hmm. So $600 for a desktop with a 21-inch 1080p touchscreen is, like, kind of nice, solid. Mm-hmm. Um, you said Pentium Gold, yeah. dual-core oh, Pentium Gold or a Core i3 is definitely on the lower end, but then 16 sure. gigs and a 256-gig SSD is on the higher end. So, okay. Uh, 16 I mean, gigs is on the higher end, 256 SSD is, is like, no, mid- definitely. I would call that lower end. SSD, if it was like NVMe, or actually, it just listed SSD. I don't know what. I guess at hard drives should be gone. Hard drives, I shouldn't give you credit for not using a no, hard drive. No, don't, yeah, don't okay. give credit for hard drives. All right, so the, I'm with you so far. 
Mm-hmm. I think I'm with you so far. Chrome OS only, so it's going to have auto-rotate, but obviously it's just Chrome, so you're going to be using Chrome. You need as much RAM as you can get, so yeah, huh. lots of lots of RAM fair. for Chrome OS. Fair, I think fair, I'm fair. with you. So, like, in my eyes, Chromebooks are pretty amazing because so many people who get a laptop are only using it for, like, web browsing, watching YouTube. If they're doing schoolwork, they're doing it in Google Docs, answering emails, like, Almost everyone who comes to me that I know isn't a big tech person that asks for a laptop recommendation, I almost always just suggest a Chromebook because yeah. they're so they're three hundred bucks usually. They'll last a decent amount of time, maybe not as long as a regular laptop, but it's also three hundred dollars. It's like yeah. a third of the price of a MacBook. It's definitely been um, the best part for me about recommending a Chromebook. It's if I can ask you what programs you need to use and you answer that question in websites, mm-hmm. I can give you a Chrome a yeah, Chromebook. Exactly. You're gonna go yeah. Gmail, and you're gonna go, you know, Google search, YouTube and Netflix and all these things. It's like, oh great, yeah, you can definitely use a Chromebook. Here's something half the price of what you thought you're gonna have to exactly. pay. Exactly. I bought Claire one at Costco years ago and it's still running and it's she still uses it every day um so here's my kind of hot take on this um okay all right i think this might make a lot of people mad which is kind of why it's a hot take (laughs) but just hear me out here okay i think this pulls off the category the newest imax tried to get into better than the newest imax so Hmm. like let's think about how apple sold the latest IMAX, right? We okay. did those bright colors. They were an all-in-one stand with their screen. They sold this as, this is a computer we want you to put as a family computer in the common areas of your house, your living room, your kitchen, your family room, stuff like that for the family to use. Most likely, generally, web-based stuff, watching YouTube videos. They want it in the kitchen, so you might watch uh, cooking videos or pull up recipes or be able to FaceTime with someone. Yep. Um, but all of that was in a... Uh, you know, that doesn't have touchscreen. I mean, sure, the specs on the the iMac are way better than this. It runs Apple, all that. But I don't think that's all needed for the thing it's trying to sell it as. This is a good looking, it looks good. It looks like it could run for like in your family room, whatever. It's not sticking out like a sore thumb, like a big desktop tower is. Mm -hmm. It has touchscreen and rotate. So it's easy for video calls or pulling up long, recipes or something like that in your kitchen it has a wireless keyboard and mouse nice and easy looks like it has a speaker on the base to me this looks like an easier and most of all way cheaper i'd be much i'd much rather pay 600 bucks to put this in my kitchen and be like a dedicated i'm in the kitchen i'm using it to facetime not facetime video call you could facetime tr- yeah. you could facetime um video call i'm using it for recipes i'm using it to just like uh, watch videos or something like that okay. while I'm in my kitchen. This looks like it pulls that off better than the iMac. You know what? You you, you swayed me. You sold yeah. me. I think I buy it. The only Ooh. interesting thing... Yeah, one more I thing. Have one more argument. Okay. It also uses Android apps via the Play Store, so this is a way better thing for smart home control in your living room, in your kitchen, stuff oh, like okay. that. You can download all... I mean, it obviously has Google Assistant, and you can download all your different smart home, con- home control apps in it. So now you have a rotating or whatever touchscreen in your living room in your kitchen that you're now controlling your lights, you're controlling your Nest, you're controlling all your general smart home stuff yeah. through that, looking at your Nest cameras and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. When I remember reviewing the iMac and thinking like, oh, Apple is very, very almost hell-bent on making sure we understand that this is not just a normal computer. It's supposed to be your family yeah. room, everyday, multi-purpose, like, friendly computer. Mm-hmm. And and I actually like the way this one looks better, mm-hmm. I think. It's got the fabric on the stand, then it's got black bezels, and it, it actually rotates, which is really interesting. I don't yeah. know I don't know exactly what I would rotate my desktop to portrait for all the time, I but think the fact in, that you can do it is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, in some of those scenarios, like, say, a recipe, for example, now I'm getting more screen real estate because a recipe doesn't really benefit from uh, lengthwise real estate, but if you have a list of ingredients, you're, you are benefiting there. Or... Uh, some people even like it better for like video calls. Yeah. It uh sometimes portrait is a little different, especially if you're a video calling someone on a phone, it's just going to that's going to be the standard aspect ratio or whatever that they're probably using anyways, so it, it yeah. fits better. The one thing I would still give the advantage to Apple for, and this is kind of something they continually do anyway in all of their budget products Mm -hmm. is it's overpowered to the point where it's just going to be way more future proof than Mm -hmm. anything else in its class now the iMac is still a thousand dollars it's still more expensive than this but if i were to bet 
which one is going to get software updates and run smoothly for longer, it's definitely the iMac. Kind of the yeah. same way the iPhone SE is like an impressive chip in an older body, but it's going to get software updates and run smoothly probably just as long, if not longer, than any other Android phone in its price category. So it's it's kind of about what you want, but I buy your hot take. That's much better than my I, hot take with Fahrenheit last time. <laughs> so uh, I, I think it's a good one. I will say my one con I put on, put on here is generally be, and this is anecdotal evidence, but Chromebooks I thought don't have as long of a lifetime, especially compared to Apple products. Mm -hmm. So I definitely agree with you. And I think we all agree. I'm not trying to say this is more powerful than an iMac. No. I think generally the iMac for a sit-down computer blows us out of the water, but the fact that it adds a rotating screen and touchscreen makes it seem like more of a, a home, almost not even a computer. It's like bridging its gap into just like being part of your space at home better than the iMac does. Yeah. The iMac is still a computer and you have to use it as a computer. Yep, it's Mac OS. Mm -hmm. Do you, in a, in a family room computer, is a touch screen the move? So I, I see it as that when I think of it as like, so in the kitchen scenario works the best here because a lot of times in a, like when I think about iMac talking, saying put it in your kitchen, like you still have a keyboard and a mouse. I can't mm -hmm. imagine having like stuff out on my countertop chopping and measuring and and washing stuff off while also using a keyboard and mouse there this that gets pushed away i have my touch screen i can scroll through everything yes but now your hands there. are covered in stuff that you were chopping fair and but we all use our phones doing that anyways yeah i'm not that worried about that um and and then when it's in the living room you know i don't personally have a computer in my living room i haven't i mean growing up i had one I feel it's crazy now that everyone has computers on their own when they're children. Um, mm -hmm. We generally used to have them in the family room where we couldn't get in trouble on them. But um, having in a family room and still having the ability to control your music or control your smart home stuff by just like walking past the desk and pressing a couple buttons on the screen. Yeah. That does feel like it integrates a tad better than an iMac. Makes sense. I like it. Well, I'm, cool. I'm going to keep an eye out for it. I don't know that we're going to end up getting one, but I, I kind of like that there are Chrome OS sick. desktops out there now. I'm really terrible, it, actually. Terrible name. Absolutely awful name. Uh, yeah. Chrome AIO. Is that the, how you say it? HP AIO? Chrome AI. I'm, I'm guessing it's literally just the letters AIO. IO. AO. AO. AIO. AIO. Not going to say okay. it out loud. Yeah, uh, it's break time. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's it for the Chrome OS. Samsung has had their unpacked event where uh, it kind of kicks off smartphone season for us usually around sure. this time of year because I feel like the floodgates have just began to open. Yeah. We're about to get a bunch of phones in August, even more in September, even more in October. But it's the Samsung event. Two folding phones. Also two watches. Also some Galaxy Buds 2. Galaxy Buds 2, pretty small update, but they do have ANC and they're 150 bucks and they're very smooth. They look like Easter candy. They're extremely smooth, yeah. yeah. Or at least the purple ones. And then they got two watches, the uh, sort of a classic version and a modern version of a uh, similar spec with the new software. Mm -hmm. But I think we're just going to talk about the phones for right now because there are plenty of thoughts on these two. So which one do you want to start with? We have the Fold 3 and we have the Flip 3. Let's just start with Fold. Okay. Fold 3. Fold, fold three. 3. All right. So Fold 3 looks a lot like the Fold 2. We've done, by the way, video hands-on of both of them are already up by the time you see this, and we've got the phones in hand. Uh, but, yeah, it's uh, it looks very similar to the Fold 2, but there's a bunch of really interesting choices that they made. New specs is not a surprise. Snapdragon no. 888, mm -hmm. 12 gigs of RAM, and all the specs. But uh, a couple things they changed on the outside. Number one, you've got uh, almost the same outside cover screen, but it's 120 hertz. Mm -hmm. That is nice. I remember complaining and being a little bit jarred by switching back and forth between 60 and 120. Yeah, that, that was the biggest thing is that it wasn't continuous between the phone. Like yeah. it wasn't fluid between them. They so. made that majestic update on the inside and the outside was still 60. So now that's 120 and I really liked using it. Felt like a normal phone. Obviously, it's still a big candy bar shape, but that's a good upgrade. Didn't you say it's also like 18 pixels larger than yeah. last year? Yeah, it is. It is a weird, it is a... I want to pull up, let me pull up the exact number because it is kind of funny. Technically, we do have a different resolution. Hold it's, on. It was like a low enough number to the point where I don't know where where it could have gained those pixels. Am I think I, it's maybe literally just like rounding of the corners. It was either rounding of corners or my guess was like the hole punch. Uh, it's the same hole punch. I mean, the, okay, but, here's, the, here's the numbers. Mm -hmm. Fold 2, 
Cover screen, 6.2 inches, 2260 by 816. Fold three, 6.2 inches, 2268, 832. So the pixels per inch went from 386 to 387. So it's like 32 more pixels, right? 16 and 16. It's no, a, no a, 8 and 16? Eight so pixels taller and about a dozen pixels wider. 20. Yeah. Wow, yeah. That's like it. 20 pixels. So yeah, basically the same size. Uh-huh. 6.2 inch cover screen. I want to know those exact new pixels we got. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure where they came from, but there they are. Um, I really like the new hinge is much better. It's a strengthened solid aluminum now. Um, I think they call it armored aluminum. I'm not going to give them too much credit for it. It's metal. Uh, yeah. Thanks. But the phone is now IPX8 water resistant. I don't know about you, but I thought this was really cool. I thought that was a big deal, uh, but it's not. Exactly. That's exactly how I felt <laughs> when you explained it to me. Thank you. Okay. So it's IPX8, not IP68. Mm-hmm. So immediately you're like, wow, amazing, water resistance. That's crazy. Usually these these folding phones were also concerned about, like, don't breathe on it too hard, and suddenly you can dip it underwater and it's fine. Mm-hmm. But IPX8 means the 8. The 8, if you just break down what IPX8 means, the 8 is the water resistance part. The X is for dust resistance. They have not tested or certified the dust resistance. So real quick, is that true in all phones with IP ratings? The first number is dust, the second number is water? Correct. Okay, yeah, that that was a very helpful thing that I did not know about, but the video shows, it's a little harder to say for audio listeners, but yeah, right. IP, X is the first quote unquote number. Mm-hmm. It is X because it is not rated and E is the rating for water because yeah. it's the second number. So you see a lot of like headphones are like IPX5. Mm-hmm. That's just because it's a lower level of water resistance. IPX8 means you can literally like submerge it or like, you know, spray water on it from any angle and it'll survive. So that's great. Uh, but Samsung the Nemesis. Samsung sweating hearing yeah. us talking about that. You already <laughs> yeah. know some YouTube channel is going to put it Someone's underwater gonna and, and it's going to see how long before it turns off. And I get it. I'll watch it. I think that's cool. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the thing that's been damaging folding phones and giving them the bad reputation is the dust. Mm-hmm. And David and I were talking about this. We're like, well, if it was going to be fully airtight, they would have rated it for dust resistance. Yeah. They would have tried to prevent that. So clearly, I think, you know, obviously them paying and getting it certified makes me want to be happier about its durability, but I'm not going to go all out on a limb and say these phones are a next level of durability versus previous folding phones. I just think the hinge is that much more airtight that they can finally certify it, mm-hmm. but still be careful with it. It is really interesting that wa- like somehow water can't get in, but dust potentially could get in. Dust like can just get in finer, thinking about that. fine dust, like really yeah. fine particles. I mean, and, and like you said, dust has kind of, it sounds weird to say dust is the enemy of folding phones, but like, do you remember when those first ones came out? So many of the problems that happened were somebody would just see like a little bump in their screen and wonder what is that? Something got through the hinge underneath the screen and then that screen was generally broken fairly quickly after yeah, that. Yeah, it's the kiss of death. It's just yeah. a little little bit of dust. That's all it mm-hmm. takes. Um, it just made me think of Zach's video where he like ground up a bunch of oh, no. that like, was rocks brutal. and put it in the phone. That was yeah, absolutely that was, brutal. That yeah. was rough. It was never going to survive that. So, but you know, you do have IPX8 now, um, like 120 hertz on the outside. What else? New camera bump on the back is a little bit smaller, but it is a refreshed triple camera setup. Yeah, looks Good nice. to see. We'll test it, of course, for the full review. Slightly thinner, two millimeters thinner mm-hmm. and about 10 grams lighter for the whole phone. It still like feels the same to my hands. Like it's a nice, like solid, stiff mm-hmm. hinge, and all that is great. Um, but that does mean it has a slightly smaller battery, forty four hundred milliamp hours to forty five hundred. And I, I mention that because I'm, I'm curious what the battery life's going to be. I'm very interested as well. Now you have a hundred twenty hertz exactly. on the outside, mm-hmm. so we'll see what the battery life is like, and we'll test that. But forty four hundred. But I think the, the most interesting change is on the inside. I think that's a safe. That's a safe, safe statement. I mean, it's the fold. It's literally a phone a cold take. based around the the inside. Yes, yeah, so. <laughs> it's a cold take. Uh, so the inside, the crease is just as as prevalent. It's basically the same size and resolution and, and aspect ratio and 120 hertz and all that. Mm-hmm. But you have a 30 percent harder screen protector over the glass. Cool. Yeah, it's great. Cool. Um, they've also made it S Pen compatible. Big asterisk. On yeah. That. Okay. Explain the asterisk, and then I'll say my yeah. uh, take on that. So, so there's a there's a special new S Pen for the Galaxy Fold. It's the it's the S Pen Fold Edition, actually. 
Um, well and, named. Yeah, the way the S Pen is designed is it has a soft, it has a tip the way a normal stylus tip mm-hmm. will be, uh, a fine point, but it's it's soft touch and it actually retracts into the pen when you put enough pressure on it. Okay. So the easiest way to damage one of these is to really carve like with a fine tip yeah, thing yeah. in the screen protector. So this one is designed to prevent that from happening. It's a special S Pen for this phone. Um, S Pen Fold Edition. Then there's also a new... These are both optional, by the way. Yeah, I was going to say, these are optional. Not included with the phone, but there's also a new S Pen uh, Pro, I believe Mm -hmm. it's called. And it's bigger. It's more expensive. It has a battery built in. It charges via USB-C. And it has onboard memory. And it will let you copy and paste things between Samsung devices. I thought that was pretty cool. That is one of those things that I think is awesome and almost no one will use. I'm sure somebody is like freaking out and their workflow just got way, way easier and they're super hyped and I'm super happy for you. I can't see myself ever using it, but I think it's really cool. There's some people in that ecosystem who have a Samsung phone and a Samsung tablet or a Samsung laptop and this Mm -hmm. is going to be sweet. Um, But that pen has a literal physical hardware switch on it to switch between regular S Pen mode and Galaxy Fold mode. And I actually, when I was just in the the shooting area with spending my first hours with the phone, I didn't flip that switch and I went right to like oh. trying to pair it with the phone uh-huh. and a warning popped up. I think because maybe the phone realized, somehow recognized that I was poking it with a stylus of some kind. Uh-huh. And I put that warning in the video. It literally says like, hey, don't use styluses that aren't Fold compatible. If you do use an S Pen Pro, flip it to S Pen uh, flip it to fold mode, uh-huh. and so I flipped it, and then you know it retracts more easily, and then it works. That's what it does; it retracts it so more easily. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think. I mean, I think you put it a little lightly, saying that the um, and you were just explaining, but you were saying how the folds generally its worst enemy besides dust has been little nicks in the screen, and we've seen, especially on the fold one, it got better in the fold two, but I still think it was a, an issue around there. Is like yeah. you could basically carve out pieces of the screen like it would indent and then that screen's it's flexible it's fragile it's like yeah. that's really bad people were doing it with their fingernails that's on the was, first one yeah. so like to, to introduce s pen to me seems like a really bold move it automatically makes me think maybe i mean if i'm being optimistic about it it makes me think the screen has gotten a lot better sure. at least a lot more durable um because i don't see why they would ever bring it upon themselves to introduce another way of the fold breaking like why would you want to go through those headlines again yeah um so they must be pretty confident Uh, we're assuming that this retractable thing works all the time i can see the time it doesn't or you know people are messy something gets in there that s pen uh tip gets stuck and now you're all of a sudden carving into your eighteen hundred dollar phone we haven't mentioned the price yet eighteen hundred dollars that's not something i want to be breaking yeah yeah still very expensive obviously Mm -hmm. i my take on this is samsung knows that not very many people will be buying both this phone and the optional S Pen. And so that small group of people who do will take good care of it. Because you at that Fair. point have to buy the phone, That's... buy the S Pen, maybe buy the case so you can carry around the <laughs> thing with the phone. Does the case hold the Pro version also? Because the Pro version is like, so. like 30 to 40% bigger, right? Very it much is a bigger. Big yeah, pen. it's probably one and a half times the size. It's okay. it's kind of like something you'd find maybe attached to. It's like an Apple pencil like size. Like an actual maybe pencil, yeah. yeah. I like how we don't reference real pencils anymore. Because no one knows pencil. the size of a real pencil anymore. <laughs> Who's using Ticonderoga? I can't Who's? remember the last time I held a pencil, to be perfectly honest with you. I haven't held a pencil in a long time. Okay. Um, no, yeah, so it's way bigger. I don't think you're going to carry that around with the phone, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that person now has spent so much, over two grand, I'm assuming at this point, you've bought the case, you oh, bought the yeah. phone, you bought the S Pen. That group of people is going to take careful notes and take good care of their screen. And if you really get that far and start to damage the screen, like what happened? Something yeah. went wrong. Samsung's very trustworthy. I trustful think, on that one. Yeah, I think they did the math on that. Um, but yeah, it does. it is S Pen supported now. And I think there's going to be people who find that really nice because it's a bigger canvas than the Galaxy Note. Yeah, like of course. It's a I, huge 120 hertz it square. It makes perfect sense in an ideal scenario. It's just, I don't know if I fully would, as Samsung, have the confidence in it. I appreciate they have the confidence. And it, yeah. it, like I said, optimistically, it makes me think the screen has gotten more durable. I don't know why they would introduce that unless it really has. This makes me think the Note can't possibly die. The Galaxy Note can't possibly be dead after this. 
I don't know how this, you got to that conclusion that, on, because on like potentially introducing a different version of it's not it's a different version of the is, note, but they're like obviously touting the S Pen with this. And yeah, I think it's just because it's such a workaround. It's such an asterisk. A specific fold edition S Pen was made for this. Like it's a special pen. A special case needs to be bought for it. A special mode needs to be used on the other one. And like, I like that for this eighteen hundred dollar phone. They've enabled one more use case, but it's still very clear to me that the best stylus experience is the one that comes from the one that's built into the phone. I don't see how the the note dies after this one. It's It just doesn't make mental sense to me. I, I, I still know that the rumors are pointing to it dying soon, and it's crazy, but that's, I, that's I think my what, what scares me more is that the rumors aren't even really talking about it anymore, which makes me think that's way close. That means we're almost there. I, I mean little tangent we still have a couple things about the fold to talk about but i think if they really like you know this big canvas and expensive phone with an s pen maybe replacing the note the note should turn into a budget s stylus option budget large screen stylus option for the people that we've talked about in the past that are using it in a more blue collar situation where they need people who need a quick way to illustrate something in front of somebody on a job site and, and not be a thousand dollars and not be $1,800. Like I don't want to be on in a construction website or a construction site with a, a fold, an $1,800 yeah. fold that yeah. might break. Where you're, there's um, dust everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there is two more things I have written down that I want to talk about. One is like very new, which is the underscreen selfie camera. Oh, yeah. We have to talk about that. We got a little yeah. tangent on the pen there. Yeah. Okay, so uh, there's multiple multiple selfie cameras on this phone. Yes, on this on this folding phone. Mm-hmm. So you've you've seen you've probably imagined this before, but on the outside cover screen there is still a hole punch selfie camera. Yep. And if you really really want a high quality selfie, you can unfold it and mm-hmm. use the main cameras as your selfie camera because the viewfinder is also on the outside. Boom, easy. If you happen to be on the inside and maybe still want to take a selfie without closing it. At that point, Samsung has included, underneath the folding display, a behind-the-display selfie camera. Mm -hmm. It is very reminiscent of the first-gen one I looked at about, I don't know, I just looked this up. I think the ZT, it was the Axon 20? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, The first article I found about it was end of December 2020, so yeah, probably about six months ago is when we actually got it. So that was the first gen. We know that a second gen is coming. It should be improved a lot, but it looks a lot like that, where Mm -hmm. number one, it's got this like hexagon-shaped cutout behind the screen. It, technically speaking, is better than a hole punch because a hole punch would just be a black circle, but you know, it's, it's... you drag things behind that and it's pixelated and things start to moray a little bit and you, your eye kind of catches it once in a while and if you look for it, it's there. It's yeah. very obviously mm-hmm. there, especially off axis, but it's not quite a hole punch. I would argue when you say better, just to- uh, Visually. Vi- thank you, Visually. exactly. Visually, it yes. is better. Yes. Now, the photos it takes- Exactly. Yeah. Probably worse. Mm-hmm. So I again, this we're speaking definitely now. Worse. Yeah, definitely worse. <laughs> yeah. I think that's safe to say. Um, no, we, we have this is on the backs of like a couple hours of hand on, literally an hour of hands on time. But mm-hmm. I took some selfies with the Fold 3 and I could actually see it sort of defogging the photo after mm-hmm. I take it. Now, again, this is a fast chip, Snapdragon 888. It's taking the photo quickly. But in the video, I included a bit where you hit the shutter, immediately go to look at the photo, and you see the hazy photo, and then boom, it adds the contrast, and yeah. it looks like you dragged a clarity slider. It looks up. like you're going to Lightroom and pressing auto and having it fix everything yeah, for you. Basically. Yeah, basically. So it's still doing some work there. Makes me wonder, what do videos look like? If I jump in like a Zoom call on this phone, is it going to be yeah. hazy the whole time? I don't know if it's live processing well, this yeah, type be- of thing. Because when you look in the viewfinder, it obviously isn't making the corrections, and it looks rough. Um, doesn't look that great. No, it looks yeah. like you're looking through like a scratched piece of plexiglass, which isn't that far off from what it's actually really doing. Yeah. Um, th- but yeah, I I really feel like my question is why. Now, I totally understand. I think I have an answer. Under display. I think I have my own answer, but I just want to. Yeah, okay. So like, I totally understand under display selfie cameras are a thing. They're going to be a thing. I think it's the future. It, we're... I would say in five years, we'll probably see it in most flagship phones. Hmm. Um, yeah. Just because we're hearing a lot about it recently. If you think about under 
display fingerprint sensor, those came to market pretty quick, and That's we true. see them in a lot. So yeah. I wouldn't doubt if this makes it there That's fair. pretty quickly. Um, to me, the Fold is already such a bleeding edge phone. It feels weird to put this in. Like j Phones are seeing that in now, like the ZTE, and we just got an announcement that there's gonna be a new Mi Mix 4, I think, that should have it. Mm -hmm. Those are phones that we're used to seeing these like bleeding edge things be the, the headline of the phone. The Fold, the Fold folds. That's the headline. It folds. I it, like. I don't need an under screen finger or selfie camera. Interesting. To be a headline there. Yeah. So it feels. I totally get that. It wants to have an uninterrupted giant screen. Yeah. That looks better. It has the other selfie camera. I guess the argument is, and like, which totally kills my argument on why is just you. If you're gonna do video calls, you want to do it on the big screen in the inside. Yeah. And you have to have it there. Yeah. I. You know what's funny? Maybe. Where's a pop-up? Oh, I could see a pop-up in there. Water resistance, though. Maybe uh, yeah. maybe the folding part of the fold. This is the third fold, third generation of mm -hmm. the Z Fold. Maybe the folding part, people are kind of over it. And oh, I don't man. think... I hope not. We're I, not far enough to be over the fold. Here's yet. the thing, though, about like the general crowd looking at Samsung phones and like the general population who's about to see a bunch of commercials from Samsung. Most people have not seen the under-display camera ever. Maybe we've done a video on no, the no, ZTE fair, no, no, one. No, 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 I totally agree with that. And, totally you know, there's agree a, with that. There's another you know, Mi Mix coming out that'll have this, but most people will Samsung, go, yeah. wait a second, it's under the screen and there's a camera back there? I don't know what the exact reaction is, but they haven't seen this before. And so that's one more crazy cool feature in a phone that justifies $1,800 because folding in half wasn't enough to make this thing go mainstream. So it's just one more thing. They're tossing it in there. And I think also Samsung would probably tell you this is the least used selfie camera. Like we said, we have a hole punch one on the outside. Mm -hmm. We have the main cameras if you really want a good selfie. And if you happen to be folded open and want to do something, this will pass. It will be, it'll be okay. It won't look great, mm -hmm. but it'll work. And so you now you get this you know bleeding edge technology that's in no other phone anyone's ever seen, and yep. people are going to go, man, the iPhone's far behind because that's what people do when they see an unknown feature show up just in one other the phone. Can of worms, man. <laughs> I just that's that's the reaction that I sort of predict we're going to see okay. from the mainstream crowd. Here's my counter argument to that, and it is a counter argument for just the sake of argument. There is clearly sure. no real reason to argue this okay. for stuff like the Fold and people spending a lot of that money. Would you agree that kind of like showing off this new technology is definitely a, a pro to it? Like I have the fold. My friends see me unfolding a phone. They're obviously going to ask questions about that. Yeah. The under display selfie camera goes against all the flashiness of it by literally just not being there. Mm -hmm. I highly doubt somebody you're going to open the fold and someone's going to be like, oh, my goodness, you don't have a selfie camera in there. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things you have to like point out to other people how impressive it is. Yeah, like, and that, that kind little... of loses the charm <laughs> of like being bleeding edge and like hmm. having that $1,800 phone. Again, there's no reason for that argument. I just uh, it, wanted to yeah. toss it out there. Yeah, it is It is true. I would say all the things you say are true. It, it's just like a, the enthusiast who gets this phone is going to be like, hell yeah. I, have there you go. I think that's the best thing. It's, it's totally marketed at enthusiasts and they're going to be really hyped about it until yeah. they see the hazing this fingerprint reader is still on the power button by the way just a regular fingerprint reader on the power button oh I, I think that's how fine. could you just total it's not like under the screen also alongside the camera i'm still totally team power button fingerprint reader i think it's fine i it wish fine. so many more phones did that yeah to be honest software experience generally the same as the last fold but they've they've obviously added some uh maybe not obviously but there's some new features with multitasking just because this is the phone that you get if you're going to multitask and yeah, be productive yeah. so that's what this is good at oh it's not the duo no it's not oh, the duo <laughs> yeah, well, sorry my mistake i mean you could get the duo <laughs> but you'd be waiting a lot longer for everything to happen um there is a labs feature that lets you like force apps to multitask despite their lack of optimized aspect ratio hmm. it's in a lab section so you can turn it on if you want Want. Okay. Um, I really like the side dock. So Samsung's been doing this like slide out side dock thing for like a long time since the first a Note Edge. edge I think. Note Wasn't Edge it? came first. Note Edge came first. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is a lot of years ago, but you slide it out and you get this useful, you know, panel of apps maybe, but also you could have like a compass over there or like a news ticker. You can do whatever. Mm -hmm. um, in that slide over dock, you can actually pin it and it'll just like nudge your whole UI over like 50 pixels or whatever it is and it'll leave a permanent dock of your whatever apps you want on the side of the phone. 
You can always launch from there, and it'll move like the top three to be your most recent app. So oh, if you're really? copying, pasting between stuff, it'll just be like a click away at all times. I think this is a great idea. A As great someone feature. who hates the side dock in Mac OS mm. and has used plenty of Samsung phones and has never actually taken advantage of the like you know scroll over side apps, I think this is awesome. It's great. I think it's really cool. Sick. I think it's the perfect scenario for it, and I think Samsung's been working for so long on something similar like this, it's finally paying off in this scenario. Yeah. Um, I think it's really cool. That's a good little feature. You can also just unpin it anytime you want. Yeah, right? Like, you you can use it. You can get tired of it. You can do, you can do the, the stuff with phones that's awesome where it's like, I always feel like with my phone, if I'm feeling like it, I've had it for too long, I take the case off. I'm like, oh, this is a totally new phone. <laughs> now I can just add a dock, take a dock away. Oh, my God, everything's different. Yeah. I had a time where I was I was using the S21 Ultra for a little while, and I started using that slide over thing a little more. And I was like, oh, I'll put my my to-do list and my, my camera and my, like, quick access apps over there. Mm-hmm. So I'll always, like, have them swipe away. But, like, my muscle memory when I want to go to another app is so fast oh, yeah. to just go home. And just open it from the home mm-hmm. screen that I just didn't use it enough. So the fact that it'll always be pinned over there, maybe that'll sort of finally be it, yeah. a new muscle memory habit. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I don't know. For eighteen hundred bucks, I'll ask this last thing about it. Do you think it takes another step towards adoption by like more reasonable people? It's one thousand eight hundred dollars. And I was just talking to also about like what are the most premium phones you could cross shop this with it's like the most expensive iphone is like fifteen hundred dollars or something right now s21 ultra is up there approaching it but eighteen hundred is still above the top you got to really want to fold yeah yeah, yeah. are people uh still going to keep waiting you think no but we're going to take a short break and i'm going to tell you about one that i do think is going to be a little more uh general consumer all right be right back This episode of the Waveform Podcast is brought to you by Blackview. Have you ever been in a situation where a dash cam would have come in handy? Like, say, maybe getting blindsided by a truck on the highway. Before it's too late, and before it's too late, get the day and night protection your vehicle deserves with the Blackview DR750X Plus Series cloud dash cams. Whether you're driving on a busy road, waiting for the traffic light to change, or just parked for the night, Blackview dash cams have your vehicle covered. The Blackview DR750X Plus model features upgraded Starvis sensor to give you stunning clarity and vivid colors, even in the most challenging of situations. Not only does it give you the great looking footage, but because of the impressive dynamic range, you can always know that you're not going to miss the moment, even if you're going at a high speed or if there's a harsh lighting condition. Not everything has perfect lighting conditions like the podcast studio. Not everyone does. Not everyone. So the, the front camera also records at full 1080p and 60 frames per second, so you won't risk losing information at that higher speed and with blackview cloud you can rest easy knowing you can check on your car at any time and even receive notifications from it on your phone there's also a dr750x plus series with extra features for taxi and truck drivers so you're covered in your personal and professional vehicles so you can go to blackview.com slash waveform and use the promo code waveform to get 10 percent off any blackview dash cam free shipping on orders over 200 bucks so that's b-l-a-c-k-v-u-e dot com Slash waveform, promo code waveform. All right, welcome back. Uh, before the ad break, you were asking me if I thought the Fold 3 was going to be like more general consumer adopted. Mm-hmm. I said no. The Flip 3, on the other hand, mm. feels to me right now, not only is the phone I'm a little more interested, I think I'm more interested because I think more. this feels like something more general consumers will use. Fully, fully, fully agree. I haven't titled the impressions video yet, but I think it'll have something to do with that. Huh. A little so, sneak peek here on Waveform. And by yeah. sneak peek, I mean you're going to listen to this like, like two, two days, days after it's posted. But, <laughs> but we're still brainstorming the title exactly. just as we record this. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So I had some hands-on time with the Flip 3. Yeah. I'll break it down a little bit. It's $1,000, mm-hmm. $999. So the now, now you're really like in the mix with other yeah. phones you can buy. It feels rough saying that in the mix, but it is in the mix. We are not saying this is cheap by any means. No, no, no. It's in the it, mix with the other very expensive phones. Yes. There are consumers that buy $1,000 phones who aren't big tech heads. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So what do you get? So so the last flip 
I, I like the last flip. There were two of them, actually. There was the Z Flip, and then there was a Z Flip 5G, which is like the second one. A little bit of a newer chip, uh, Yeah, 5G. that confused me a little bit. Yeah, um, and we, we know people who, like, love the Flip. I'm pretty sure Austin Evans still dailies the Flip today. I think Quinn used it a bunch, also. My favorite is yeah. Quinn used it just, like, throw it on the ground yeah, every once like, in a while. Yeah, it's just like a daily phone, just like any other phone. I love it. Um, the Flip had a couple interesting shortcomings because it was mostly compared to the Razer. It had a very small outside cover screen. Yeah, I, I actually described it as like the better hardware Razer without the nostalgia. So ultimately that doesn't sell very great. Yeah, yeah. It had it had like a one, it had a 1.1 1. 1 inch outside cover screen. So it really just you showed you the it. time. Mm -hmm. You could like swipe your call to accept on and see stuff on the outside, but it wasn't great. It was very small. So that was the one thing that I really wanted to be bigger. It also had a 60 hertz display, mm -hmm. and it had uh, a pretty high price tag. So again, 999. This is a 128 gig phone. So I think the asterisk I'll put on this 999 price is the other flips in the past started at a higher price, but they also started at 256. Mm -hmm. So the 256 of this year's phone will be higher, but they've cut down to 128 gig for 999. Most thousand dollar phones have more than that, but so they did and they didn't. Yeah, they got there, but not quite. Anyway, <laughs> so they have a bigger outside cover screen. And I I just generally like this design way more. We've been handling uh, the old flip. A just billion times it. more. Uh, I can't even describe how much more I like this than the old one. That mirror finish was terrible. Yeah. That thing, it kind of looked like a toy to me. Quinn, Austin, if you're still holding the flip right that now. doesn't mean it's not good. I just did not like it. No, you're going to like this one way more, though. Yeah. Okay, so they flattened out the sides. They've got this little two-tone design, but the outside cover screen is now 1.9 inches, which is hard to you know put in context, but it's way bigger. It's like four times the area um, because it's twice the diagonal. Yeah, I, I mean, we basically say it looks very much like a Pixel 2. If you imagine a Pixel 2 that could fold in half and then you take the glass area on top of the two-tone you know, exterior, yeah. that's basically the screen. Yeah, with and the it's cameras. right next to the dual cameras. Mm -hmm. So now that this outside screen is way bigger, you are more, it's not like razor big where you're like reading through things on it, but it is much bigger to the point where you can like tri triage notifications on it. You can swipe over and like do music playback controls comfortably. Yeah. And these are things you don't want to have to like, it's this thing where you don't want to open the phone every yeah. time. Like you pull it out your pocket, you just want to hit pause. Having to open it unfold it and pause is just one more step exactly so it's a the the original flip it solved a problem by being able to be more compact but then also created a new problem with that right. is like generating that extra step in between doing things so yeah. this solves the problem it created yeah so it, it it takes away some of that friction of getting the quick things i think there's a stopwatch there, there's the timer alarms you can put a weather widget in there view your calendar just mm -hmm. like some neat simple quick glanceable things Makes sense. Do we know if you can get into like Google Assistant or if it just uses the phrase there while um, it's closed? So I didn't get to try it during the hands-on. I don't believe there's a way to get to the Assistant on the outside screen. I could double check that when we get the units, yeah, but I believe. Because that would be really nice to not like, oh, I, yeah. I think about all the times where I just, I still love my squeeze feature on my Pixel and oh, just yeah. like being able to, to pull up Assistant on the outside screen without opening it and get a quick result on there would be awesome. Yeah, that would be nice. I, I'll try that for sure. Okay. But yeah, like you said, it looks like the Pixel 2 because it's two-tone. The hinge, again, gives it IPX8, so it is not dust-resistant, but you can splash this phone and it'll be fine. Uh, Snapdragon 888, 8 gigs of RAM on every spec. And it's just, it feels, when I open this phone, there's like a, there's one upside and one downside to it. When I'm when I'm using it, it feels the most like a regular smartphone of any folding phone. It looks the most like when that is flipped open, it just looks like a a weird aspect ratio regular flip or uh, sorry regular like candy bar smartphone. Yeah, and it's not even that crazy. It's a little no. tall, but it's yeah, yeah. it's pretty close. And the hinge is so good that when you open it fully flat, it's really flat, and you you kind of just ignore the crease. The downside is because the crease is across the middle, mm -hmm. a lot of your swiping touches the crease, which yeah. is not true about like the fold because it's in the middle horizontally. So you do you feel the crease. I a think that more. we had this conversation yesterday, and I found it super interesting. We didn't bring it up last time, or just didn't notice it, maybe. But like, yeah, if you have a a phone that folds 
I'm just gonna call it hamburger style, and then a full phone that full hot dog style, like you are the crease is horizontal or vertical. When it's horizontal, you're scrolling over it all the time because that's just where your hand goes. Yeah. When it's in that big, uh, big screen of the fold and it's in the middle vertically, you're almost never scrolling over it because if you're swiping left or right, it's probably on the left or right side of the screen. Yeah. You almost never drag your finger over top of it. Yeah. So I feel like the the fold with its big vertical crease is more visually distracting, but the flip with its small horizontal crease is almost never visually distracting to me, but mm-hmm. I do feel it with my thumb sure. more, which is almost more distracting. It's a feeling. It, you just have to. You kind of have to just hold it and use it. Yeah, it's a vibe. <laughs> it's a vibe. You'll, you'll figure it out once you hold it. You'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, it's just it's much better built. It really is much better built. It's got the flat sides. It's still got the fingerprint reader and the power button. Like we said, we like that. IPX8 I mentioned. We like that. Not a whole lot wrong. It's got better speakers as well. Mm-hmm. It doesn't do S Pen support despite the stronger cover glass in this phone too. That doesn't bother me. It doesn't at all, bother yeah. me. It also doesn't have the fingerprint, or sorry, it doesn't have the hole punch selfie camera either. It has a cutout still on the inside. It it does have a hole punch. It doesn't have under. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's does fine. have. A we cutout. have so many. There's too many vocab <laughs> words in the smartphone world. Sorry yeah. if we mess one up every but once it, in a while. It does have the cutout, and I'm fine with that too. It's the only selfie camera. Although, yeah, you can close the phone and use a, the outside's cover screen as a viewfinder. So if I you want a good selfie, there yes. you go. That's so easy too to just pull out that little thing, just like in the palm. And yeah. just snap a photo. It's easy. Nice. That's what I, I liked that. about the I didn't razor. Think of that. So yeah, it's the it's the closest to a regular phone, in air quotes, regular mm-hmm. phone to me. It's the it's the closest to a regular phone experience, closest to a regular phone size, closest to a regular phone price. Uh closest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think this is the closest that we're gonna get to regular people picking up this phone. And if I were to recommend any folding phone to For, a real human mm-hmm. today, this is definitely the one I would pick. To me, it is the f- the folding phone that gets the closest to what it's like intended to be. This is a f- supposed to be a regular phone that then becomes compact when you're storing it. It does that. It does exactly that. This the is benefit. so much easier to fit into a purse, into a bag, into a pocket. Like it just it co- it's much more compact while being a regular phone when it's open. The fold's kind of purpose is to. We keep talking about almost becoming a tablet. It's not quite there yet. It's still a bit small, and it's still really chunky when it's folded in. So I think that's still a ways from hitting its, like, exactly what it's intended to be, whereas the flip kind of nails it already. The fold has a bigger ambition. Exactly. And that's why I think it's going to take longer. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think whenever I think about these folding phones, my question is always, why does it fold? Mm -hmm. And the answer for the flip why does it fold is, oh, so it can be more compact in your pocket. Oh, that's simple. Great. It does mm-hmm. that. It wins. For the fold, the reason why does it fold is so you can have a tablet in your pocket. Mm-hmm. And that's a much bigger ambition. And they're working towards that. Right now, it's it's a seven and a half inch screen. It's not like replacing an iPad, but it, like an iPad mini is 7.9. It's like almost there. But that's hard. That's really it's hard. really hard. It's hard to get it as thin as possible and reasonable as a regular phone. And replacing a tablet in your pocket. Yeah. So yeah, the flip is there on the ambition, and I think that's pretty cool. Also, <laughs> David pointed this out because he thought it was great that there are seven colors, but seven colors potentially eight. Actually, yeah, potentially yeah. eight, but uh, four regular colors, three Samsung.com exclusive colors, and then the Tom Brown edition. And then there's also two SKUs. There's 128 gig <laughs> and a 256. So that means uh, 16 versions of this phone. That not a lot of people are going to be buying, but that's that's Samsung for you, just making all the things. Yeah, if you're arguing um, folding phones aren't here to stay, I don't think anyone would make 16 SKU numbers of yeah. a phone they didn't think was actually going to do. Samsung's okay, so. Samsung's going to make sure they're here to stay. Um, I don't know. I I'm into the uh, the matte the black one. The Phantom Black one is the only matte finish one that I saw okay. from those four colors. So they were cream, which is like yellow. Green, which is a sort of a darker military green type thing. Lavender is yeah. purpley, and then phantom black, matte yeah. black. So two tone would be it would actually be two different finishes, glossy and matte black. Yeah, cool. I mean very similar to Pixel Two Black. True. Um, I really want to see green in person. From the videos that I've seen, cre- cream looks nice. Um, it's like and- banana. 
Oh, is that the banana one? Maybe yeah, not. Maybe cream. cream's not nice. Uh, <laughs> green green looks the most interesting to me. I don't know. I've been really digging green phones lately. I like that they're doing them, and I like that they're not doing them bright. They're doing them like a muted color instead. I think when we got that, was it the 11, the iPhone 11? With love that, it. With that love green? it, love it, love it. I think that's one Do of the... Do more muted stuff, because then the 12 blue also looked amazing. Pacific blue. Mm -hmm. One of the best. Hot take. Best not, iPhone not color of all time. Not a hot take. Not a hot take? No. You're wrong if you don't think Best that. Best iPhone color of all time? I think that's... What do you think? It's debatable. I mean, there's some <laughs> great reds. There's some okay. great reds. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I really like How dare you blue. make a Samsung conversation <laughs> and an iPhone Into talk. an iPhone. I can't I just, believe you. It's the natural flow of tech conversations. Uh. You know, it's kind of how it goes. Um, anyway, that that's pretty much it. We've got yeah. a lot more. Obviously, the watches are out, too. The buds are out. We've got full reviews of as much of this stuff coming as we can. But like I said, the, the floodgates have opened. I feel like we're oh yeah, we're getting there. Strap we're in the thick in, of baby. it. We got phones coming. <laughs> We've got all sorts of other tech, com tech coming. But yeah, the videos are uh, are on their way. So feel free to check those out. But that's been it. I feel like we've we've hit all the points. We've talked about all we the things. It. And we'll be back with you guys next week. Be sure to subscribe to the studio channel. I'll give that a shout out at the end of this. So if you make it this far in the video, subscribe to the studio channel. Hope to see you over there. Thanks for watching. See you later. Waveform is produced by Adam Molina. We are partnered with Studio 71 and our intro outro music was created by Vane Sill. Mm -hmm.